In this third of the lectures for this week, we'll be looking at tree diagrams and how you can use tree diagrams to solve conditional probability problems. So, an example here, 3.5 says, machine A and B turn of respectively 10% and 90% of the total production of a certain type of article. Probability machine A produces a defective article is 0 0.01, while that for machine B is 0 0.05. I want you to know that probability an article taken at random was made by machine A given the article is faulty. So the first thing to do in these kinds of problems using uh, involving probabilities is define some events. Now in fact you might look at this and think that there are two machines, or there's two events, and an art article is defective or not, there's another two events, but in fact there are only two events. And the way we think of this is A is the event that the item is produced or an article is produced by machine A and D is the event the article is defective. So of course if the article is produced by B then that's a complement of A and if the article is not defective that's a complement of D. So I'll write the given probabilities, I've got the events here and translate that into probabilities from what I'm given over here. So the first thing is probability of A I'm looking at now. What I'm told is that 10% of the production comes from machine A, that's going to be 0 0.1. That means probability of a complement, which means machine B produces the article, is going to be 0 0.9. So this is the same as saying machine B produces the article. And also, what I'm given further is machine A produces defective articles with probability 0 0.01. That's machine A. So given the article is the article is defective given machine A has produced it is going to be 0 0.01 and if the article is produced by machine B it's 0 0.05 so probability of D excuse me, I don't mean that, I mean D again, yes probability the article is defective if it's produced by machine B, which means a complement is the remaining 0 .0, 0 0.05, sorry. Let me get this properly. Yeah. 0 0.05. So I've got those probabilities over there. Now I can express, I can write this, or put this in the tree diagram as follows. So and I'll draw the trade diagram just in the space over here. So what I've got here is either an article is produced by machine A or not by machine A, which means machine B, and then the article is either defective or not defective. So in this tree diagram, the nodes, if you like, are the events and the arms give me probabilities. Probability machine A produces the article is 0.1, and so machine B is 0.9, or a complement. The article is defective. If machine A produces the article, it's defective with probability 0.1, and it's not defective with probability 0 0.9. And likewise, if machine A doesn't produce the article, it's defective with pro probability 0 0.05, and it's not defective with probability 0.95. So, the thing to note here, though, is that in this arm here, what I have got over here is probability of A. And in this one over here is probability of D given A. Because I have already had A happen here. Likewise, this here is probability of A complement. And this here is probability of D complement given A complement. And likewise for the other arms. Now, part three here, if I go back to the question, what it asked me was this. It says, what's the probability? Probability. And that an article was made by machine A. So this is a source of confusion for many people. They don't know how to write this, whether it's going to be machine A given defective or defective given machine A. The question tells, if you read it, read it carefully, it says probability that the article was made by A. 
then the given part follows. So I'm probability of A given the article is defective. So I can write this probability in terms of the event. Is probability of A given D I'm after. If I use my conditional probability law, that's probability of A intersect D over probability of D. And then you can see from here, the top part remains the same. What I've used here, the uh, theorem of total probability is to write this down. Probability of D in terms of the other events. So it's probability of A with D or A without uh, A and D together, or not A and D. And the numbers going there, but the other way of doing this is essentially, so you can check the numbers over here. The other way essentially is going to be, if I'm looking at probability of A given D, the, top, the first line is fine, is A and D over D. Probability of D is worked out as follows. If I take a look at this, let me change the color on this if I can. Oh, would I can do it, yep. If I look at this, what I've got is probability of D, D happens either there or there. So I follow the arms along which D happens. And if I do that, then this bottom line here comes around very quickly. It's 0.1 times 0 0.01, that's 0.01 there, I've got the numbers long, wrong. Or the other arm is 0 0.9 times 0 0.05. So that gives me this bottom line I've got there. So please have a look at this. I've got the number here that's not right, it's 0 0.01. So that's essentially how we we'll solve problems using tree diagrams. First of all, define events, then write the given probabilities in terms of what we have been given in the question. In other words, get the numbers out of there in terms of the events. And then use the appropriate rule, rule tree diagram, and then use the appropriate parts of the tree diagram. First of all, write the probability that you want, probability of A given D, in terms of conditional probability law. The top part follows easily. A and D, again, is just the top part there. That's going to be that part there. That's always going to be there. And the bottom part is D, and you can see I've just followed the arms to get those. And the top part there, 0 0.0 times 0 0.01, reoccurs here, and that will always be the case. So that's three diagrams. And that leaves me to cover one more aspect, and that's independent events. And independent events follows very simply. All we know is that the formula or the rule here is a and B independent means probability of A and B happening together is just simply the product of the probability. So probability of A intersect B is probability of A times probability of B. Now, that's the only condition we have to check. Now, it seems a bit mysterious as to why we should have it this way. And the explanation comes from the idea that we have if two events are independent, then the one occurring shouldn't affect the probability of the other occurring. And that's what follows here. So if I look at probability of A given B if two events are independent, then the Conditional probability formula says that's probability of A intersect B over probability of B. But because of independence, I can write the top line as probability of A times probability of B over probability of B. When I cancel a probability of B, I'm left with probability of A. So probability of A given B isn't affected by knowing that B has happened. It's still just simply probability of A. Likewise, if I go the other way and look at probability of B given A, again, my rule says it's probability of A intersect B over probability of A. And then I can write the probability of A intersect B as a product, probability of A times probability of B because of independence. And again, if I this time cross off probability of A, you see probability of A, of a given B, sorry, probability of B given A is just probability of B. In other words, knowing that A has happened doesn't in any way affect the probability of B. So that's what intuitively what independence means. And this follows here from the definition. So again, and that's the definition, one uh, equation four, and we want to check that when we want to find out if two events are independent or not. Another particular idea is a mutually exclusive, and of course here mutually exclusive, as we saw earlier, means that there is no intersection. So be careful, and that is mutually exclusive, and that is independence. They aren't the same thing. You can look at the examples here. 
and I want to take a look at this example over here. We'll do this one in class together in the lectures and also we'll take a look at example 3.9 in class. You can try those examples if you wish by yourself before class. Thank you. See you in the lectures. Bye.